The Rocky Mountain Harley-Davidson dealership in Colorado, the state's oldest, closed last April. Marina Yavoli, Kathy's daughter and the Littleton Motorcycle Shop's head of marketing, said the family firm had been forced to close as part of a corporate downsizing strategy. The dealership was founded in 1979 by Kathy Yavoli, who still serves as RMHD president. New and used motorcycles as well as servicing, parts, and merchandising are all available at this dealer. For reasons beyond our control, we must close, Marina Yavoli stated. Independent dealers do not fit the template that Harley-Davidson is trying to create in order to consolidate the market for ethical reasons. They are eliminating the last of the family-run enterprises. Staff had become like family over the years, so the news of the closure, delivered to employees on Monday and to the public on Wednesday via Facebook, was devastating, she added. Based on changes in this overall market and in line with Harley-Davidson Motor Company's network strategy, we will be closing as an authorized Harley-Davidson dealership, the post read. Well, this dealership is just one of the many closings all over the country. What could have happened to bring about such a situation? With rising costs and chip shortages squeezing margins, Harley-Davidson Inc. Hog.N. reported a decline in first quarter profit, in line with Wall Street projections. However, sales were lifted by global price increases. Shares of the Milwaukee-based firm were trading 1.2% lower at $36.20 on the New York Stock Exchange midday. Input costs have been rising for the 119-year-old business, which has been hit hard by rising prices for raw materials and logistics, and it now anticipates those increases to continue for the remainder of the fiscal year. Nonetheless, Harley reported robust consumer interest in their motorcycles. Due to further margin difficulties brought on by the worldwide semiconductor shortage, the company has maintained its projection for an already lengthy backlog of orders for bicycles. The supply chain situation is expected to improve gradually in the second half of the year, and we share this cautious optimism. However, it is still hard to know for sure. CEO Jochen Zeitz disclosed to investors in a conference call. Approximately 6% more was made in sales from bikes and Harley's related products division, totaling $1.3 billion, with the largest gain coming from the parts and accessories industry, which increased by 11%. The business claims that production difficulties led to fewer dealer stocks, which in turn hurt motorbike sales in North America. According to Chief Financial Officer Gina Goder, on average, a bike is resting on the showroom floor in the U.S. for less than two weeks, which is a dramatic decrease from Q1 2019, when this was more like 10 weeks. A mix of pricing measures and surcharges for its cruisers and longer-range Grand American Touring bikes have helped Harley's revenue rise, and the company expects this trend to continue. First quarter net income decreased to $223 million, or $1.45 per share, from $259 million, or $1.68 per share a year earlier. Overhead has been reduced and revenue has increased because of the company's pricing increases in international markets. Inflows of cash increased by 5% to around $1.5 billion. Motorcycle sales increased by $1.3 million, up from $1.2 million the previous year, indicating continued high demand. Another problem with Harley, is that it tried to sell its bikes to everyone and it could not clearly identify its target audience. One of the main goals ever since the reorganization in 2009 was to attract a younger and more diversified audience, as the brand had previously been identified with middle-aged white men. Harley-Davidson's marketing campaigns from the company's founding in 1903 make that abundantly evident, as do the brand's history and reputation during World War II, when thousands of the company's motorcycles were deployed overseas to aid the Allied cause. This reinforced the generalizations made about the corporation and was a major factor in establishing the company's lasting association with biker gangs and counterculture. Due to poor brand management, the company risks losing the trust and loyalty of its aging but dedicated customer base by continuing to use outdated technology in its motorcycles. But the average Harley-Davidson owner is now over 50 years old, up from a far younger age when the business first began to lose market share to KTM, Honda and BMW. Over time, the competition has effectively broadened its product lines, and consumers have welcomed the new offerings, such as adventure and off-road bicycles. Harley-Davidson appears to have an intractable problem, with its devoted fan base and any innovations that diverge from the standard posing a threat to the company's survival. A change in the company's marketing strategy will be necessary to erase this perception. The future of electric bikes seems bright thanks to a number of factors including expanding consumer awareness of air pollution issues rising investment in EV charging infrastructure, and growing concerns about vehicle emissions. 
The market is anticipated to increase at a CAGR of over 4% between 2020 and 2026, from its 2019 valuation of $30 billion. Harley-Davidson has already begun its ambitious 10-year quest to recruit 2 million new, younger riders. A move the corporation is making is to establish a chain of riding academies around the country. Additionally, a new electric motorcycle named Livewire has been introduced to the public. While Livewire sales are still very low, they are bringing in people who might not have otherwise considered Harley-Davidson. Finally, there are some common issues coming up with Harley that have caused them the loss of support from their customer base. One of these issues is incorrect front tires. There may be a total of 614 affected units as a result of this problem. The FXD, FXDB, FXDC, FXDL, XL1200L, XL1200R, XL50, XL883, XL883L, and XL883R are all Sportster and Dyna models from 2007. A document of the company's defect and non-compliance notification claims that the Kansas City Assembly Facility may have installed a 90190-19 front tire on the affected vehicles instead of the required 100190-19. We haven't tried this setup out yet. This may cause some performance concerns. However, it can also cause a major car crash. Another one is the problem with the exhaust. The motorcycle's design is to blame for the risk of injury to riders. In reality, the exhaust pipe in some motorcycles is designed to come in touch with the rider's pant leg. As a result, a rider could get a nasty burn on his or her pant leg. To make matters worse, the rider's focus may be diverted from the road due to the shock of the injury. All XL1200L and XL1200N motorcycles manufactured between 2006 and 2007 are impacted. Oh, and then there are the problems with the brake lamp switch. According to the defect notice, Harley-Davidson began looking into the issue on June 14, 2010, after receiving a report of a trike model losing its rear brakes due to a loss of braking fluid. Another accident, suspected to be related to the same problem, happened the following month. The company later discovered that the rear brake light switch on the affected vehicles may fail after being exposed to temperatures. This could cause brake fluid to seep through the rear brake switch and eventually cause problems with the bike's rear brakes. Apparently, this might affect as many as 250,757 units. So, that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.